I think that the most important thing is, is to finish that first draft. That's what I always tell myself. And so I try not to make the paragraphs too precious and beautiful and because I'm going to lose it all. I know that. that I'm going to cut all of it. Or it'll come into so many shards that I'll, what will be left is a Frankenstein monster of what was before. So yeah, the first draft. And then take a little time off, look at it. And then you will see what, if you're honest with yourself, you'll start to see these great... Um, it'll echo certain parts of the book and if you pay attention that's the novel and it's probably not the novel you planned and you have to go to that book and not the one you so you feel the themes just keep rising up on their own yeah. and you just say you just listen to them and obey them. you listen to those and you listen even even in your physical description you realize in this book there started to be a lot of mirrors that showed up mm -hmm. and I don't feel magical about the writing process but I started to see oh well it is that relates to the theme. I'm going to keep those going, right. and I'm going to get rid of the metaphors that are about birds, which aren't really doesn't do much for this book. Mm -hmm. I was at a writer's colony, and I thought I'm going to I'm I'm going to finish the book. I'm going to hit that moment, and I really did. There was a moment in writing the ending, luckily, yeah. uh, when I suddenly I felt that feeling like you climb to the top of the mountain, you have the view, right. and you can see the whole thing. And I, the feeling of relief was so huge for me. It was, again, it was about these stories within stories. Having to thread them through and have them work was so, I had so many drafts of it, with so many different versions, with different, told at different times, and, and how to end it. Not what happened, but how to tell it. Right. Always how to tell it. That's always the problem. Like, you know what's going to happen. But Do the man. leave them with that? You've got to get it right. You know, yeah. you've got to make it happen in the right way. If you overdo it, it's too much. If you underdo it, then you should be fired. Right. You know, so you've got to be right there. You stick the landing. So, so suddenly I saw it. I had written so many versions of the ending, and I, I suddenly saw exactly how to do it. I just stayed up. I was working 12-hour days. Put, I saw it all, and I put it all together. Because I had all the material. Right. I just had to get it all in the right order. Boy, that must have been a nice couple of weeks. It was great. I mean, it was <laughs> terrible the right. day before that happened. And then after that, it was great. That's always how it is, right? <laughs> Why does it have to be that, that way? Worst moment, and then, without giving the ending away, at what point did you know it was going to go the way it did? I sort of have a funny answer. I always knew it would go that way. Okay. It went that way from the short story. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know why. That was part of the problem with the short story. It didn't make sense. Um, it had the wrong tone to it. And it took me a long time until a, a later draft when I understood. It was, um, it was my editor. She was quoting Peter Carey, the writer Peter Carey, who said, when he edits a book, the characters do all the same things, but for different reasons. And his job is to figure out why he made them do that. I wanted to be a, a painter. Mm -hmm. when I was really little um, and then I had a teacher tell me that you couldn't be a painter it wasn't a real job so uh, so writer is a, <laughs> was a real job to me well I think when I really started I wasn't quite a reader yet at that point fourth grade um, and then I became a big reader and I thought that I wanted to that's what I wanted to make you know the way you want to you want to play in that world right and so it felt like you know I had the action figures and I could play with it myself. In fifth grade, and it was a ripoff of Watership Down, but it was about squirrels, and um, it was illustrated, and uh, my teacher gave it an A++, and she said, call me when you write your first novel. And I, I, I have tried to find her. Have you? I know where she lives, but she, the phone number's wrong, so I haven't contacted her. Well, I was going to ask you, it's one of my questions, is there, was there someone who encouraged you, and it sounds like she might have been... That was at Mrs. Poppy. Mrs. Yeah, Maybe Mrs. She'll Poppy. See this. Maybe you will, Mrs. Poppy. Thank you. <laughs> Try to see if you're good at anything else, too. You know, it is hard. It's very hard. Um, I think the main thing is not to follow any trend of any kind and to do um, to do your work um, apart from other people's advice. I think it's very hard to write without feedback, but I think it is great if you can because then you don't have the echo of a committee trying to write your book for you. Um, and I think it takes a lot of confidence and a lot of doubt in equal portions. Too much confidence and you write something no one wants to read because it's all ego. And too much doubt and you don't get it done. But you have to, you have to, you have to
you have to mix it up that way, I think. But you don't, and, and so you're not a huge proponent of the, of the finding all the critics you can to read your work. I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think for literary fiction because what you're look, what literary fiction, I guess if it has a definition, but I think it's just crosses genres. It's you're trying to write something that no one's done before. It's supposed to sound brand new, your voice. There's no formula for it. So how could anyone give you any advice except, certainly for the first draft, keep going. That's the only thing you say to anyone writing a literary fiction novel, is just to keep going, and then you can show it to people. Thank you.